he's tickling on this side of my neck. Is he coming? I see a face. <sighs> okay. Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome back to my channel. So this week we are doing a video that's hopefully helpful to some of you. I get this question a lot. So I thought I would put it all in a video and that is all about how to transition your snake. More specifically, we're going to be talking about ball pythons from live food to frozen thawed. First, let's talk a little bit about why you might want to change your snake's diet from a live diet to a frozen thawed diet, or why, if you're just getting a snake for the first time, why you might want to feed frozen. Now, generally speaking, live feeding can be pretty dangerous for your snake. If you have ever seen a rodent's teeth and claws, they are both very sharp. And as you could imagine, when the rodent is about to be killed, it's going to fight back and that can very often lead to scratches and bites on your snake and they bleed and they can get infected and it can just be really bad for your snake. So generally feeding frozen thawed rodents are going to be a lot safer than feeding live. But like I said to each their own, some people's snakes will not take frozen and that is okay. If your snake at the end of the day will not take frozen, then please don't starve your animal. Feed your snake what it's going to eat. And also, as I always say, I am not an expert. I just get this question a lot and I had to go through transferring my other ball python from live to frozen when I got her so I thought I'd make a video on how I did that so yeah so the absolute very first thing that you want to do when transitioning from live to frozen rodents is make sure everything in your tank is okay make sure the temperature is okay make sure the humidity is okay make sure that it's not the dead of winter when you're trying to do this because a lot of times in the winter time it's going to be harder because snakes will just kind of go off feed so make sure everything is good to go before you start because if one of those things is off it could make the whole thing fail and then you're going to be frustrated so just make sure everything is good before we even get started doing anything. And again, keep in mind, some snakes aren't just going to switch overnight. My other ball python, it took months to switch her from live to frozen and now she takes them no problem, but do keep in mind that this could be a pretty slow process. So let's start with some simple things. So these are gonna be things that are going to work, especially if you have one that's gonna be easy to transition. These are things that are going to work and should be tried first. <laughs> first of all, after you thaw out those rodents, we are going to heat them up. Now, it goes without saying that they have to be thawed out. They cannot be cold. Snakes cannot eat frozen rodents. It will make them sick. It will make them regurgitate. We cannot have that. So we are going to thaw them out and then we're gonna warm them up. I like to warm mine up in bowls of water. So I'm going to take not cold water, but also not hot water, some warmth in the middle of there. And I take the rats and put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in that water with a cup on top because those rats are going to float. And I just keep switching out the water to warm water when it gets cold until they are warm. We basically want that rat or mouse to feel warm to the touch, to feel like it's alive. And a lot of times, especially with Sterling here, if he is not taking a frozen rat, it's just because it's not hot enough so we just make sure it's warm enough and a lot of times that will help. You're also going to want to make sure that you are feeding at appropriate times so like a ball python is a nocturnal animal so we are going to want to feed them at night and that too can help just because that is their natural cycle. And along with feeding them at appropriate times we want to make sure that we are feeding them in a quiet area. So if possible if you could get them in a quiet room to feed them this is especially important for me because I do have children and children are noisy and that can distract the snake. A lot of snakes, if it is too loud and noisy in their environment when they're eating, they will drop that rodent. So we want to prevent that. So my snakes are in my bedroom and we feed them and then turn out all the lights and leave and it helps a lot. So it is also going to be super useful if you use feeding tongs, the super long ones that are actually made for snakes. And sometimes instead of just throwing the rat in there, if you can just grab the rat with those tongs by its tail or by the scruff on the back of its neck and just dance it around and make it move like it's alive, sometimes that helps. And then sometimes snakes will only take it if you leave it out in the open or if you leave it in front of their hide and don't make it dance. This is kind of one of those things that you have to play 
with and see what your snake personally likes. My snakes, all three of my snakes all like for their rodent to be danced in front of them. So that is what we do. But if that's not working for you, you can always try to change it up. Like I always say, all reptiles, all snakes, they all have different personalities. So you just kind of have to cater your care for them based on that specific animal. And if those things fail, you can try to feed them in a separate container. Now, this one is kind of tricky because moving an animal into another container before or right after they have eaten can cause them to regurgitate and that can make them less likely to eat in the future. So if this is something that you're going to do, you have to be super careful with it. So this is one of the big things that we did for Sylvanas to help her eat. And it actually did work for her. But again, that doesn't mean that it's going to work for everyone. So what we did was we... We got a Sterilite bin that was appropriately sized for her. We put a heat pad under it. We would move her into that bin to eat and we would put the frozen thawed rodent in there with her. We would put that in a room and turn off the lights. Just leave her in there for the entire night. We sometimes would even take a sheet and cover that up. That way it was super dark. It was super quiet. She had heat and she had no choice but to run into that rat and then she would eat it. So putting the heat pad under that Sterilite bin actually allowed us to leave her in there for an extended period of time and not have to move her directly out of it right after she had eaten back into her house so that she could digest it. So that worked very well for her. So if that is something that you want to try, you definitely can. But like I said, just please remember that if you are moving an animal right after they are eating, then it could stress them out. And if they throw it up, then they are less likely to eat the next time. So just keep that in mind. But I didn't want to make this video without putting that in because that did work for us. Let's talk about things that you can do if your snake is a little more difficult and those things might not have worked. With pythons and anything with heat pits on their face, you can actually take a blow dryer or hot water and extra heat up the rodent's head. Now at this point, the rodent is already going to be completely heated thoroughly, so it's already going to be warm. But what we're doing is just making sure that its head is extra hot and that's going to allow those heat sensors to kind of zone in on just the head and it's going to give it more of a refined target. Sometimes just having more of a focal point will help them, especially when you have really finicky eaters like Sterling here who panics if my hand is in the tank with him because if he saw my hand in a tank too long with the rodent, he would get confused and he wouldn't know what was what, so he just would not eat at all. So that just kind of gives it more of a temperature gradient and something to zone in on if that makes sense. Sorry about Sterling suddenly being away the computer that I am using while my MacBook is being repaired just crashed on me and I just lost the last 10 minutes of footage so <sighs> my last 30 minutes was spent trying to fix the issue but I am back this next one is something that helped us so much the sterilite bin helped so much but I honestly don't think we could have transitioned Sylvanas without this next one and that is pre-killed rodents so what a pre-killed rodent is is just what it sounds like it is a rodent that has just been killed but hasn't been frozen yet this is something that we would go to our local reptile specialty store animal tracks for I talk about how wonderful they are all the time and this is something that they offer and it was a lifesaver for her it made everything so much easier and basically what it does is it just provides that transitional phase from a fully alive running around rodent to something that is dead and frozen and has been frozen for who knows how long it gives the snake a warm body to sense and look at that's going to have the same smells as a live rodent because it's going to have just been in that bedding it's going to have been all up against the other rodents. It's going to still be warm and have that same body temperature gradient that it would if it was alive, but it's going to be super still. So it's going to get them used to attacking things that aren't running around all crazy. And it's going to just help them transition. So like I said, we would go to animal tracks and they would do the killing of the rodent for us. That is not something that I could ever do if I wanted to. That's just something that I'm super thankful that they offer 
covered. I don't know how you would go about killing a rodent for that in a humane way. That's something that you would just have to look up and see. And if you want to do that and it's going to make it easier for your snake, then go ahead. If you have a local reptile specialty store, ask if you could get a pre-killed rodent. And a lot of times that helps so much. Along those same sort of lines is scenting. Scenting is when you take a rodent and you are going to rub scents of other things on it to help. So with things like ball pythons, corn snakes, things that only eat rodents, rubbing other rodents, especially live rodents or live rodent bedding, anything like that on it can help tremendously. If you have animals that only want to eat fish like garter snakes and you are trying to get them to eat rodents, you can rub things like like tuna on them and that helps a lot too. The possibilities here are honestly endless. You can scent it with anything that your snake would like by simply rubbing that frozen thawed rodent against it and it'll pick up the scent and it helps a lot. Warning, this next one is super gross. <laughs> gross I'm not gonna show pictures or anything but this is super gross and if the idea of gross things grosses you out then maybe you should skip this part and go to this timestamp but let's talk about braining. Braining is just as gross as it sounds. It is taking that rodent and puncturing its skull to get brain to come out and getting its brain to come out. This is something that people do often if their snakes just flat out won't eat anything. Snakes apparently absolutely love the scent of rodent brains and a lot of times if your snake won't eat at all doing this can help them eat and it gets their appetite back thankfully this is not something that we ever had to do i am so happy about that i remember reading about this when we were transitioning sylvanas from live to frozen and just hoping that i would never have to do that and thankfully i didn't but this is something that people do sometimes so just keep that in mind Snakes do love that. just a couple other little helpful tips. Like I said at the beginning of this video, snakes all have their own little personalities and any kind of care given to reptiles is going to be on a snake by snake or animal by animal basis, all dependent on that animal's personality. You can just try changing things up because just because something worked for my snake doesn't mean it works for yours. You can try changing up between wet and dry rodents. Some snakes will only eat rodents if they are wet after they have been thawed and some will only eat them if they are dry. My snakes will not eat wet rodents but I know that there are other people whose snakes will only eat wet rodents so if dry rodents aren't working try just dipping that rodent into some warm water before you give it to your snake and sometimes that will help. And if your rodent is too wet after you have thawed it out because freezing anything results in ice and it can dampen it you can just use that blow dryer of the head method and just kind of quickly blow dry the whole thing to make sure it is super dry and sometimes that helps as well. Just like in my ball python feeding guide video I talked about using different colors of rodents and that can go for frozen thawed rodents as well. Sometimes snakes don't like to eat certain colors of rodents and, and sometimes they don't like to eat rodents that have certain color eyes. So if you've been trying to feed your snake only white rodents then try to switch to black ones or gray ones or spot ones and sometimes that'll actually help but that is about all I have for this week guys I just want to stress again I'm not an expert this is just things that I did and that worked for me and things that I read about while trying to transition Sylvanas when she was a baby over to frozen thawed I do want to stress though do not starve your animal sometimes snakes just won't eat frozen if that is the case and it has been weeks since your snake has eaten feed it live and just try frozen again the next week. Don't just let your snake start losing weight and starving just because you want to switch them over to frozen. A fed snake is better than a dead snake. Make sure you're feeding your animal something. Just know that it can be super stressful and super frustrating when you are trying to switch them. For us, it was very frustrating, especially because when we got Sylvanas, she was a baby and she was eating those little baby rats and they were alive. And it was the saddest thing that I've ever seen because they would 
let out a little squeak when she would attack and it was super super sad but that is something that we knew would be a possibility when we got her just know that it is a possibility when you get your snake that that might be something that has to be done and if you are super set on feeding a picky snake especially if it's an adult that has eaten live its entire life if you're super set on switching them to frozen just be prepared to be super patient and just know that it might take a long time good luck if that is something that you are working on right now. Good luck to you and I hope it all goes wonderfully. But that's it. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put a new video, which is every Sunday and Wednesday. Huge thank yous and shout outs to Reptile Mad 11 for following me on Instagram and going through and like it, holding on stuff. Thank you so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. First, let's talk a little bit about why. First, let's talk a little. First, let's talk a little bit that are going to work when. And then you can put those rats into the.